Lord, everybody, listen, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I dare you right where you are to just begin to open up your mouth and just begin to give God praise right there in your homes and on your jobs. You might be driving in your car, amen, and you have tuned in, amen, to be in worship with us. Come on, I just dare you, just open your mouth and tell the Lord, Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for seeing, uh, allowing for us to see this day in which you've made, amen, and so therefore we have no other choice but to rejoice and give God praise. Listen, let me welcome you tonight again to our annual Ministers and Workers Conference. We certainly are excited about you being with us online, amen, in our virtual sanctuary. And I promise you, just as the praises are going up in our sanctuary here, amen, I'm believing that as you all are joining in, the praises and the anointing of God will certainly be felt in this virtual sanctuary. We certainly give honor to God who is the head of our lives and we honor our interim prelate, none other than the Bishop uh, Prince Earl Bryant Sr., amen, and also general board member for the Church of God in Christ. We honor him, amen, tonight. We honor our women's supervisor, Supervisor Yolanda Ford, amen, and all of our administrative assistants, our pastors, superintendents, our missionaries, amen, we are certainly looking forward for a high time in God. Did not our hearts burn on last night? Oh my goodness, Bishop Godfrey Stir brought a power-packed word, and I don't know about you, but I'm still feasting, amen, I'm just venting, I'm just venting, we are still feasting on the word tonight, and I promise you that every round goes higher. And so tonight, our speaker is going to be none other than our administrative assistant and the incoming prelate for Texas Southwest number two, Bishop Shelton Craig Rhodes. And I promise you, get your plates, get your cups out, because we're looking for God to do something great. Would you do me a favor? I need you to hit like, and I need you to share this broadcast so that people all over the world can see, amen, that the, that the Texas Southwest jurisdiction is in high praise tonight, coming all the way from the city of San Antonio, from the Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ, located at 5895 Benz Engelman Road, again, right here in San Antonio, Texas. Again, I hope that many of you can join us uh, later in the week, amen, as we continue to move forward in worship. On tomorrow night, we're hearing from Bishop Maurice Green, and then on Saturday, we'll hear the voice of our leader, Bishop Prince Earl Bryant Sr. Listen, I'll be back, amen, during our worship experience and our offering, Amen, to talk a little bit more with you. And I'm just hoping that you all are liking and that you're sharing. And listen, do me a favor. Let me know where you're from. Amen, put in the comment sections where you're joining us from so that we can, amen, acknowledge you and see you. Amen, all of you that have joined us from all over the world. I know y'all don't wanna hear me talk, so we're getting ready to go into our worship experience. I hope you're ready. Get your tambourines ready. Amen, get your song ready because we're getting ready to go into high praise. Come on, let's go.
just coming on in and worshiping him on tonight. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Come on, let's worship him. Hallelujah. We magnify you, God. Lord. Bless your name, God. The song simply says, you a covenant keeping God. You are a covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Come on and help us sing. You are the covenant keeping God. You are. Covenant keeping God, you are, you are the covenant keeping God, and we say Yahweh, the covenant keeping God, Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping. Come on, one more time. Covenant key. 
like that. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. He will not leave you. He said that he won't forsake you. He's right beside you. And that is all that matters. He will not leave you. He said that he won't forsake you. He's right beside you. And that Love and
Hallelujah. Come on and worship him. Come on, I feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. Come on, begin to worship him. He's all we need. He's all we have. Come on, give him the highest praise. Don't look at your neighbor. Just go ahead and lean back and give him the highest praise right now. From the depth of your spirit, man, can you say hallelujah? Can you say hallelujah? Can you say hallelujah? Come on, glorify the name of Jesus with the fruits of your lip. Come on and give him praise. Give him praise all over this house. He's worthy of all the praise, all the honor. Hallelujah to his name. Glory. Come on, bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, give God a hand praise. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Whatever you need, God's got it. Amen. Whatever you need, he's got it. Amen. Amen. At this time, we ask you to rest on your feet all over the sanctuary as we go into our invocation. Invocation coming from the elder Kirk R. Brodnix, pastor of Bread of the Life, Church of God in Christ, Colleen, Texas, followed by Old Testament scripture by the elder, uh, the minister, uh, Minister Marcus Davis. Amen. Judah Worship Center, Temple, Texas. Then followed by New Testament by the elder Larry Carpenter, pastor of Greater Bethel Church of God in Christ, Waco. Would you receive them in that order? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come humbly before your throne of grace. We thank you that you hear us when we pray. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do. We thank you for Texas Southwest. Oh God, we've come to worship you. We've come to praise you. We, we've come to magnify you. We've come to lift you up. Oh God, have your way in this place. Pour out your spirit. Anoint us afresh. Oh God, heal the sick today. Give strength today. Encourage today. Bless your people today. Oh God, help us to leave here better than when we came. It's all about you, God, and not about us. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. the Lord, the Old Testament scripture coming from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 28th through the 31st verse. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his most holy word. Our scripture text tonight is coming from Ephesians, the sixth chapter, beginning with the tenth verse. And it says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and power, against power, against rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual witness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your lives girded up with the truth and having your breastplate of righteousness. 
that I've read for you, starting at 6th chapter, 10 through 14. May God add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his most holy word. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many been joining the choir all week long? Amen. Come on and give them a hand praise. You're up for a selection by the Texas Southwest Jurisdictional Choir. You're in the hands of uh, Kat, Miss, Missionary Kathy Duhart. Amen. Amen. We ask you to pray for the choir as we come to you at this time with do not pass me by. Amen. On the direction of Missionary LaQuatra Finney, pray for the choir as they come. Give them, give them some love at this time.
see the Lord in glory. In Hallelujah. Do not pass me by. Yeah. Amen. Come on, give God a hand praise. Amen. Amen. We're up to the ministry and giving at this time. We're giving it over to the Jurisdictional Finance Committee. You'll be in the hands of Bishop Godfrey Sturb. Come on, give him a hand praise. Amen. Let's stand, everyone, as we prepare our hearts to give. I'm going to ask Superintendent Joseph Johnson to lead us in prayer as we prepare our hearts to give them to the Lord. Lord, we come before you tonight thanking you, God, for just another time. Another time, God, that we can give back to you. You've been so merciful, been so kind to us, so many doors you've opened, so many ways you've made, so many times you've healed us. And God, we want to be guilty of giving back to you. Your word says we can never beat you giving because the more we give, the more you give unto us. So God, will you bless the gifts tonight as we give unto you. We pray, God, that you would continue to bless your people. Look on them and strengthen them. Build them up, God. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Come on, just tell God thank you. Tell him thank you.
pandemic has affected the Church of God in Christ in a tremendous way. We've been grieving for the past year or so. We've lost approximately 30 bishops that I know of. I lost my mother to COVID, so we've got to do something about it. We've got to encourage our brothers and sisters to get vaccinated. Get vaccinated today. We can save lives. at the Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ for our annual ministers and workers meeting. Listen, I'm so glad that all of you all are a part of our virtual sanctuary and I hope that this far you have had such an experience, amen, as we have had right here in the sanctuary. Of course, we honor each and every one of you. If you joined us a little bit later on in the broadcast, listen, I wanna know where all of you all are joining us from. So please, in the comment sections, drop right now where you're, where you're joining us from. We usually have people from all over the world that will join in with the Texas Southwest jurisdiction uh, in our ministers and workers meeting, our holy convocation. And we wanna know where you are so that we might be able to not only just acknowledge that, but also pray for you and your entire family. Listen, I don't wanna belabor the time, but I am honored to stand here with our interim prelate, none other than general board member and Bishop uh, Prince Earl Bryant Sr. And I'm certainly looking forward, amen, to hearing him on Saturday. So again, make your plans to be here in the sanctuary so that we might be able to hear the voice of our leader. But we certainly want to be able to take moment, a moment now to let you know there in the virtual sanctuary that you're not by yourself, amen. Our leader uh, is concerned and cares enough about you right there in that virtual sanctuary as he does those that are present right here at the Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ. Bishop Bryant, it's such a, an honor to be here with you and certainly your leadership throughout this transition process. Would you just take a moment and just greet our uh, virtual sanctuary members that are joining in with us right now with the Texas Southwest Ministers and Workers Conference. Thank you so much, what a joy and delight it's my happy privilege to be in San Antonio, Texas. On this week, we are in our annual Ministers and Workers Conference of the Texas Southwest Jurisdiction. Uh, we're having a wonderful time. Each night, we've had great preaching. I said this week, it seems like we are in convocation mode and spirit. On Tuesday night, Bishop Dickinson Weld, the Adjutant General oh of our church, preached a powerful message. Yes, and on last night, Bishop Godfrey Stirps, oh my God, oh preached God. a powerful message. We've had great preaching. Preaching makes convocations and workers' meeting. And tonight, Bishop uh, Rhodes, uh, Sheldon Rhodes, will be preaching. And tomorrow night, Bishop Maurice Green, yes. sons of this jurisdiction, we're in the culminating ministers and workers conference it will be the end of an era uh 66 years oh this wonderful jurisdiction has proclaimed the gospel of jesus christ empowered men and women to do ministry all the way back from bishop td agahard to bishop se agahard bishop mason appointed bishop td agahard in 1956 and we're coming to the close of this historic jurisdiction in Texas. Yes. I must give deference to my leader, the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, who gave me this assignment and we're so appreciative for that, and Bishop Charles H. McCullen, who's assisting me, general board member. God bless you, stay tuned. I want to invite those who have not been here yet to come out and let's close this uh, historic jurisdiction out 
in grand fashion. God bless you. We love you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bishop. Listen, we know he has to get back into service, but I want everybody right now to just like, a, hit those uh, heart, heart buttons so that we can let Bishop Bryant know how much we appreciate him, even in our virtual sanctuary. I saw a comment a little bit earlier as we came on uh, about, again, just really understanding this transition. And I do, uh, you know, apologize for anybody who is really unclear with the processes and procedures of the Church of God in Christ. But as Bishop Bryant was speaking a few moments ago, again, this is the culminating event for the Texas Southwest ecclesiastical jurisdiction. Again, for those of you all that may not have uh, known or you know, uh, not a few months uh, ago, amen, we uh, lost a jewel. We lost an angel that certainly God had allowed to serve as the prelate of the Texas Southwest jurisdiction and the pastor of the Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, none other than Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart. And we always will remember him and honor his life, his legacy, his leadership, amen, that he's rendered to the Texas Southwest ecclesiastical jurisdiction. And as our procedures and protocols would call for, amen, the, the voice of the jurisdiction has spoken. And they spoke and said that, listen, we don't want to just uh, allow for this jurisdiction to die, but we want to multiply this jurisdiction and allow for the work to go on. Even Jesus said, look, greater works will you do, amen, than I was even able to do because of who you are. And we're certainly looking forward to the work that these jurisdictions are going to, uh, to cover. Again, Texas Southwest 1 and Texas Southwest number 2. Texas Southwest 1 will be under the leadership of Bishop Maurice Green Jr. and Supervisor Designate Gerald Denny. And then Texas Southwest number 2 will be under the leadership of Bishop Craig Rhodes and Supervisor Yolander Ford. We'll talk a little bit more about that as our week goes on. Listen, we are in our worship experience for our offering. And you, right there in our virtual sanctuary, can participate. Again, I see people from all over the world uh, that is joining us from Colleen, Texas, uh, from even, I think, Cincinnati was online. Austin, Texas is online. Tomball is online. Listen, all of you that are joining us in our sanctuary, you can be a part of our worship experience by your giving amen on today god said he loves a cheerful giver and we certainly want you to be able to participate on the screen now are the two ways to be able to give you can give by way of cash app which is dollar sign txsw c-o-g-i-c-g-e-n again that is texas southwest kojic gen by way of cash app if you're giving via givelify you can look for texas southwest jurisdiction located at 5895 benz engelman road in san antonio texas and you can give your gifts amen to that uh that handle again these are two ways for you to be able to give many of you may have already sent your offerings in and that's great and i'm believing that as you have sold this seed today and you've done so with a cheerful heart that god is going to multiply amen you abundantly amen because of your sacrifice that you uh, have rendered through your giving again i'm praying for each and every one of you amen that god will certainly answer prayers concerning the things amen uh around you uh, again, Temple Texas is joining us uh, live. Again, if you're just if you're just joining in, I would love for you uh, to drop in the comment sections where you are joining us from. I am live right here with you all, so I'm seeing it as you all are putting it in the chat box. Amen. Uh, Houston, Texas is representing all the way from. Phoenix, Arizona. My God, today. Listen, I'm so glad that you are a part and that you're here with us worshiping the Lord uh, together. Again, we want you all to be able, we want you all to be able to, to give, amen, uh, according to how God has laid it upon your heart. Listen, this, is ha this has been already a power-packed week. As Bishop Bryant said, Bishop uh, Dickerson Wells uh, came and led out this conference, spoke a mighty word, followed by Bishop Godfrey Stirrup last night, a man who uh, delivered a powerful word. And then on tonight, our speaker is none other than Bishop uh, Shelton Rose, who will come tonight to deliver the word of God. Listen, on tomorrow, amen, as we get ready to prepare for our evening service, tomorrow is Women's Day. It is Women's Day, and we certainly want you all to be a part of uh, our uh, Women's Day services beginning at 10 a.m. 
on tomorrow morning, our Women's Day service. We certainly honor and celebrate our women supervisor, Supervisor Yolanda Ford, amen, and all of her work that she does with the women's department. Listen, our women are on the move. And so tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, it will begin right here at the Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ. And then we'll culminate our women's service, and then we'll go right into our evening worship experience. Again, two ways to give tonight through Cash App, dollar sign TXSW, C-O-G-I-C-G-E-N, and then also through our GiveLify platform, which you'll look up Texas Southwest Jurisdiction, uh, located at 5895 Benz Engelman Road. I'm so, 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 so super excited, amen, about just what God is getting ready to do in our services on tonight. And I promise you that if you come with expectation, God is certainly going to honor, amen, your prayer and your request that you have laid before him. Listen, I don't want to belabor the time any longer, but again, on this week, we are live from the Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ here at 5895 Ben Zingerman Road, San Antonio, Texas, live for our Ministers and Workers Conference of the Texas Southwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Will you all continue to make plans to be a part of our services all the way until the end of our service on Saturday morning? Okay, good. I'm glad that you made that commitment. Listen, I'm praying for you, praying for you that God will answer and meet your needs. Amen. On tonight, whatever you need, lay it out before him. And I promise you, he's going to answer. He's a God that he shall not lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should even repent. I'm believing that whatever you are needing God to do, that God has already done it on your behalf. Listen, I don't want to belabor the time, but let's get ready to go back into our uh, worship experience that is already in progress. Don't lose your praise. Amen. Because every round goes higher and higher. Let's go. Dr. Cleon Sykes, praise God. She has published several books. She's out in the foyer. Feel free to stop by and pick up her book. Praise God, I've picked up two of them. Mine are already autographed. She's, again, right out in the foyer. So please stop by and pick up a book for a friend or even for yourself. Please get your calendars out. Save the date. Some of you use your electronics. <laughs> the date is May 16th. Come on, say May 16th. May 16th. Well, the grand inaugural of the celebration of our interim bishop, Bishop Prince E.W. Bryant. Come on, give it to me. Praise God. Again, that's May 16th, 6.30 p.m. Praise the Lord. Now, general admission is $150 and $250 for the dais. All right, the Royal is going to be held at the Royal Sinesta Houston Galleria. The address is 2222 West Loops, South in Houston, Texas. Praise God. The room rate is $159, and that rate is good until April the 25th. Amen. Please see any of us. Mother is here. Our bishop is here. We want to go out and celebrate for that inaugural. Amen. The Women's International Convention will convene this year in Orlando, Florida, May 30th through June the 3rd. Guess what? They have gone paperless. So praise God, you have to go online and do your registration. There's several cards, the premier card, the red card, and the white card. Additionally, 
you don't have to present your vaccination card. However, they will have things in place to be sure that the saints are safe. The Agape Church of God in Christ presents the first annual drive and go forward, turn your ears on, golf tournament. <laughs> Scheduled for June the 18th, praise the Lord, in Killeen, Texas. Praise the Lord. Registration. Now, if you want to be a sponsor, praise God, the bronze sponsorship is $250. You may just want to put your name on the program. Amen? $500 for silver sponsor. $750 for the gold sponsor. Platinum is $1,000. Now, just in case you just want to go as a player, that's $140 per person. Amen? Again, that date is June 18th at the Agape Church of God in Christ, Colleen, Texas. Amen. May God continue to bless you is our prayer. God bless you. Amen. Come on, give God another hand of praise. Amen. How many ready for the word of God on tonight? Amen. Amen. We do give thanks and deference to our uh, interim bishop for allowing me to serve in the program committee at this for this time at this time we give you into the hands of superintendent michael r johnson amen for the introduction of our leader it is my honor tonight to present our leader the Honorable Bishop Prince E. W. Bryan, the Interim Bishop for Texas Southwest, and it is indeed an honor tonight to present him. I've never presented a general board member of the Church of God in Christ. So this is the first for me, and I want you to clap your hands for the bishop on tonight, and I am indeed honored to do this i appreciate bishop prince e w Bryan senior he is the general board member of the church of god in christ prince Bryan is a native of east texas prince Bryan was saved and called to the ministry in the month of march 1963 he has pastored seven churches and remodeled or built three of them. He is a former state administrative assistant to the jurisdictional bishop, Bishop N.H. Henderson Sr. He serves as a board of a bishop's regional bishop of the South Region, number one, which includes Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and New Mexico. He is currently the pastor of the Island of Hope, Church of God in Christ, and Buck Street Memorial Church of God in Christ in Houston, Texas. He is the jurisdictional prelay of the Texas South Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Bishop Bryan is also actively involved in the ecumenical and civic community. He has many uh, distinguished Service Awards, Community and Public Service Awards, and proclamations from the White House, the Governor, the Mayor, the Congress, just to mention a few. He received a formal education at Concord High School in Enterprise, Texas. He furthered his education through Life Bible College, Los Angeles, California, the Gulf State Bible College in Houston, Texas and the Family Bible Institute in Denver, Colorado, where he received his Doctorate of Divinity degree. He is married to Miss Mrs. Yolanda H. Bryan, and they have five children. Let's clap our hands for Prince E. 
Bishop Prince, e, General Board Member Prince E. W. Bryant Sr. And I want to say thank you to his leadership during this transition and multiplication. And I'm gonna close with this. When I was invited to the Zoom call and Bishop Bryan shared these words with us, I want you to remember that you are brothers. And beloved, on the table of here, Bishop blessed me with those words. He said, you remember now, your brothers. And we may be called Texas South 1 and, say, and Texas South plus 2, but I'm going to go by what he said. He said, you remember your brothers. Amen. Won't you stand with me and receive prelate, Texas Southwest Interim Bishop, Bishop Prince E. W. Bryan. Amen. Clap your hands for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I always enter into the worship service with praise, enter into his courts with praise. Praise is a weapon of warfare. And praise ushers in the presence of the Lord. In fact, praise enthrones God in our midst. It really builds the throne upon which he sits in our midst. If you want to know what church God is in, find the church that's praising him. That's the church where God is, not was or shall be. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Let's give him a high praise. Come on, raise the praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One, one Bible definition gives the definition to hallelujah as victory. And when you shout hallelujah, you're shouting the victory. Come on, shout the victory. Come on, look around and at someone and say, victory, 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 victory. And why don't you go a step further and say, I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. You may be seated in the presence, in the presence of the Lord. Thank you. I've never been introduced so much so grandly <laughs> in my career. And uh, certainly I'm happy glad to have the, the privilege granted to me by my presiding bishop, Bishop Charles. I'm sorry. I, I'm going back in time now. Bishop J. Drew Sheard. And, and if that blooper went out, blot it out. <laughs> Say amen. <laughs> blotted out. Um, I preached my first sermon on March the 25th, 1963. And next year, I'll be in the 60th year, but rolling back to 63, I preached a sermon. And, and I'm glad that you all weren't there. <laughs> in 63 <laughs> my mother said to me 
you can't say that. I was 15 years old. You can't say that. You're too young. But I've lived long enough now to say what I want to say. <laughs> and am able to speak truth to power anywhere at any time and to any persons. I've been so blessed by the training each day. There's some wonderful teaching and training going on here in the day sessions. Um, God bless my friend Bishop Maurice Green, Jr., Bishop Sheldon Rhodes, Bishop Godfrey Stirps, and to all of these wonderful superintendents, some I had seen from a distance, but I've had the privilege to interact and to know many of you up close. And you look as good up close as you did far away. Y'all know how that go, don't you? Sometimes you can see a lady, she looks, excuse me, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Long ways off. She looks so beautiful. I'm going to leave it right there. Right? <laughs> I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to leave it right there. God is, God is working in this uh, culminating culminating workers meeting and everyone please get your program this is a historic program it's one of the bookends if some way somehow we could go back to 1956 and get that first program and put that book in with this program with this book in would be wonderful keepsakes. Um, I've had the coveted privilege of knowing both Bishop T.D. Agahart, oh, what a stately gentleman and a spiritual leader he was. And the longtime friend of mine. Uh, Bishop S. E. Agahart. We we pastored together in 1973 in Bay City, Texas. And we were just elders hungry. <laughs> hungry to do the will of the Lord and serve the Lord's church. Um, I want to make a couple of presentations on this evening. Um, are there members of the Stewart family present here tonight? If you are, would you please stand at this time? <laughs> Superintendent Clee, Clee and W. Stewart's family, I'm going to ask the administrative assistants and superintendents and leaders of this jurisdiction, along with Mother Ford, to stand. Well, why don't all of the credential holders just stand with us at this time? And I make this presentation in the name of Bishop S. E. Agahart and the Texas Southwest jurisdiction and a grateful church for his services as administrative assistant from 1996 to 2000, what's that number? 2019. Would you come forth? Let's give him a thumbless round of applause. Would you go make that presentation? Would you go down and present that?
That's his wife. Our new superintendent, Carrie Stewart. Mother Carrie Stewart, God bless you. I knew your husband. He was a friend of mine. And on behalf of Bishop S. E. Hagel Hart and this wonderful historic jurisdiction, we make this presentation. God bless you. Uh, there are members of the Agahard family. Merlin, are you here? Yeah, yeah, there you are. Say amen. And God bless you, dear. In this house and on this day, in the name of Bishop S. E. Agahard and the Texas Southwest jurisdiction, and really a grateful church for all that your father has sacrificed and given, the least we could do is to honor you and recognize this. For 24 years of unselfish service that he gave to this jurisdiction, be blessed. We're thankful. Would, would you make that presentation? But let's, let's do this picture. Come on, come on. Well, it's preaching time. It's preaching time. God has blessed this jurisdiction with able and prolific propagators of the gospel message. And tonight is no different. It's my honor to present our speaker for this evening, let me, let me preference the introduction by saying thank you, first and foremost, Super, uh, Bishop Rhodes. You have served, though you, though you are a bishop with a diocese to come. You've served us as an administrative assistant throughout my tenure here. And, and, and thank you for that. He didn't have to do that. He could have, he could have said otherwise. But he has had a servant spirit. Bishop Sheldon C. Rose, the pastor of the Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, San Antonio, Texas, and who just happened to be appointed by the chief apostle, J. Drew Sheard, presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ. And for 20 years, he serves as pastor of the Greater Zion Temple, Church of God in Christ, Temple, Texas. And superintendent of the Greater Temple District for 26 years. For 23 years, 
I'm gonna have to ask him how old is he in a minute. But all <laughs> for 23 years he served as jurisdictional treasurer, 19 years as the chairman of the board of trustees. Consecrated uh, November 2016 auxiliary bishop. Appointed by Bishop John Shear, chairman of the National Board of Bishop Judiciary Committee of the Church of God in Christ Everywhere, Finance Secretary of the Texas Interjurisdictional Council of Bishops, 36 years as a federal loan officer, earned a bachelor's degree of science, bachelor of science degree in secondary education. Been married 34 years to missionary Deborah A. Rhodes. One son and one granddaughter. This is our preacher for this evening, anointed and appointed for such a time as this. When the choir has done its somatic solo, join me, please, all over the building and stand into your feet.
together all over the house. All over the house. Glory. Glory. Somebody say glory. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's all about him. It's all about him. But just stay with the one that brought us out. Glory to God. I bless you. Our Father God, in the name of Jesus, creator of all, Lord, we come before you once again. I thank you for allowing me to come before you, these, you're so great a people. Thank you even now, Lord, how, how good you've been to us. Thank you, God, that you brought us from a long way off. In the name of Jesus, you know, God, you've shown us what is good and what you require of us, and that is to do justly to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah, that no man come to you, Father, except through him. We give you praise, give you honor. Pray that something is said tonight, hallelujah, that will strengthen God. Hallelujah, that the backslider be reclaimed, sinners be drawn to you, that your people be edified, and the devil is already horrified. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him praise all over the house, all over the house. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank God for you and you that have joined us. Amen. By stream, by television, radio, all this social media outlets. We want to thank God for you on tonight around the world. Amen. We certainly, certainly give honor to God on tonight. Amen. To our Indian prelate. Amen. The general board member, the Bishop P.E.W. Bryant Sr. Let's thank God for him. Come on, we can do better than that. Pray God. Somebody serving us and helping us walk walk through all this you just don't know praise the lord i want to thank god for our bishop amen maurice green jr I want to thank god for him peter of mexico soon to be soon coming amen sexy southwest first amen from last night bishop godfrey stirrup want to thank god for him all these wonderful superintendents pastors and elders that are here I want to thank god for our mother the mother yolanda ford Come on, somebody, supervisor women. I want to thank God for her doing a wonderful job, her assistance. Amen. Thank God for Mother Geraldine Denny. Praise God. Mother Taylor. I want to thank God for, amen, Mother Yolanda Bryant. Let's thank God for her. I told him this morning, during the morning manner, I said, really, we've got a short window here, but y'all need to, I said, women, if you will, just take note of Mother Bryant. Praise God. She, she's She's just all over. She's all over. Seem like quiet and unassuming, but in but she gets things done. And I thank God for that. I want to thank God for my own wife. Amen. Missionary Deborah Ann Rose. Pray God. Deborah Ann. Amen. Thank God for Mother Green. Come on, somebody. Missionary Stirrup. Marguerite Stirrup. And my own district missionary from the Greater Temple District. Amen. I'll give it up here for shortly, but I want to thank God for Mr. Hazel Williams. Amen. Being with us on tonight. To all the district missionaries and the Mother's Cabinet. To you, the people of God. Pray God. If you will indulge, I'll give back a few of my minutes on tonight. Amen. If you will indulge me. Amen. To bring forth a portion of the Praise Cathedral uh, Church of God in Christ Choir. And I want to say, let me preference that, I want to thank you, Greater Zion Temple, for showing up, pray God, bringing the bus down, and, and Superintendent Weaver, praise God, I want to thank you so very much on assignment there at Greater Zion Temple, amen. This time, that portion of uh, Praise Cathedral will be back with a word from the Lord.
Thank you, choir. Come on, in his, amen, he's gone, but I want to thank God for the Bishop S.E. Iglehart. Come on, somebody. <laughs> to God be the glory. To the word of the Lord, amen, from Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses one through six. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses one through six. Amen. It reads as such. I therefore... The prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body. And one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all 
and in you all. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Dr. Gillum and others that are here on tonight. I want to deal with from that third verse there for a topic, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Can you look at someone and say, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. From that verse three there, that is the topic tonight. Pray God, Paul's writings, Paul's writings in this prison epistle. Praise Cathedral, thank God for you. Thank God for you, amen. Paul's writings in this prison epistle in during his incarceration. Some four letters that he writes, that he pens during incarceration at one time or another. Amen. To this letter, this circular letter, not secular, but circular letter. Amen. That has sent out uh, universally. Amen. To Ephesus and around, as well as to Colossae. There's a, a, a prison epistle to Colossae, Philemon, pray God, and Philippians. I mean, those were all prison epistles. He wrote uh, three pastoral epistles, as we recognize in the canon. Praise God. First and second Timothy and Titus, pastoral epistles. During his incarceration, pray God, it's believed that a man in the other time that he was under house arrest, or other time that he was chained to a Roman soldier. And he speaks tonight to us, pray God, just like a man wearing it as a badge of honor so to speak. If you've been military, armed forces, thank God Bishop Green, I mean, uh, U.S. Marines and, and others that are armed forces right here in San Antonio, much military families that are here, and the insignias that they wear in all to distinguish what branch and where they stand. And Paul, a man, wore this like a badge of honor in verse 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord of the Lord, beg of you that you walk worthy of the vocation or the calling wherewith you are called. Amen. And he went on to speak of how we should walk in accordance with how that is done with lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love endeavoring putting forth the effort amen uh, putting forth the effort amen put forth the effort endeavoring if you will to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace he pins this letter back Amen, there. And you recall, amen, just the church at Ephesus that you would see, amen, what I've often said most any time that I preach from these epistles is the background of these real churches with real pastors, with real people, the background of these churches is always in the book of Acts. It's believed that, pray God, you know, recall in Acts 19, the background here, that when Paul walked upon 12 men and asked him, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And said, so we have not so much of heard to be any holy. What were you baptized? Unto the baptism amen, of John, if you will. He preached Christ from that point forward, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, other dialects, as the Spirit gave utterance. In Acts 19 and 6. That was the beginning of this church at Ephesus. Amen. Twelve men, pray God, in a part of Asia Minor, amen, known for, amen, outright secular, secularism, if you will. The, the goddess Diana, amen, one of the most uh, uh, huge uh, amphitheaters and all the things that were going on that were there, pray God. And the people there, when Paul hit there in that amphitheater, they said he's trying Turn the world upside down. This is the last time that been spoken of us, pray God. That we turn the world upside down for Christ, if you will. Pray God, you would see also, amen, he, he writes this and he's speaking because it was a tall order there at Ephesus. And we would see here, amen, to realize, amen, having abolished, amen, in his flesh, the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make of himself of twain one new man 
Amen. Jesus, if you will. Pray God. In Ephesians 2 and 15, Paul had a tall order that God had placed on his life. You recall, pray God, that, that his marching orders were spelled out over in Acts the ninth chapter when he told Ananias, amen, listen, he's a light unto the Gentiles. And I want you to go and tell him how many things he must suffer for the gospel's sake. It is a suffering way. Pray God, not everything is apple pie, baseball, chivalry. Pray God, y'all understand what I'm saying. Pray God, it is a suffering way. Amen. But I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed within. Of twain, one new man. Pray God, we would recall in the early church, amen, the early days of Christianity, the church was largely made up of Jews. However, under the direction of the Holy Ghost, the believers witnessed, amen, there to Gentiles, non-Jews in Acts chapter 10 when God picked up Peter, pray God, used the same man as he'd used on the Jewish day of Pentecost and used him for a Gentile Pentecost down at Cornelius' house, pray God. And it was there, pray God, that the gospel was taken to the Gentiles, amen, and we would see that after a while the Gentiles outnumbered the Jews, in the church. God just has a way of doing things, doesn't he? Pray God, other sheep that I have, which are not of this for them also, I must bring. I must bring. That's Jesus. Yeah, y'all ain't said nothing. Pray God. And when we look at it, his tall order was in today's vernacular. Pray God, if you, Lord Jesus, if you want to take some of these groups, amen, some of these groups that, that are way out there from one ex extremist groups and, and, and take from one, uh, one sector all the way over to another sector and bring them together, it's only through the gospel of Jesus Christ because the gospel breaks down all barriers. This man and that spoke seven, seven different languages, sat at the feet of Gamaliel, pray God, all of these things that, to his accolade, but he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it's the power of God under salvation to all that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, pray God, to the religious one with no relationship, amen, to the Greek, amen, that one from Missouri, pray God, the show me city, I don't believe unless I see it, pray God, but the gospel breaks down all barriers, come on it, son, breaks down color bear break down gender bear breaks down race bear the gospel breaks breaks down all barriers and brings us together come on thank god for the treasure within thank god for the treasure within the gospel praise god the good news hallelujah how when he would amen as he was speaking this letter amen uh, to exalt who christ is those first three chapters amen of uh, uh, that first half of what he wrote before halftime. Pray God, he wrote to tell us about our wealth in Christ. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 3, he speaks up, pray God, that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He spoke up, pray God, that God has broken down the middle wall of partition, pray God, no longer an outer court, a middle court, and an inner court, pray God, but broken down all of that, amen, to make out of twain one new man. Hallelujah. Jew and Gentile alike. Bond and free. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. The gospel. Jesus on the inside. Any man. Come on here. It be in Christ. Amen. So we find they had eventually outnumbered the Jewish numbers. And, and here Paul is. Again, you recall, amen, even the Samaritans, amen, that were uh, part Syrian and part Jew, amen, because they were a mixture, if you will. And you recall the woman at the well told Jesus, listen, we know that you Jews have nothing to do with us. Y'all ain't saying, pray God, listen, these were two extremes that made up this church. Jews and Gentiles alike, pray God. But God used Paul to come in there through the word of God, and he tells them, endeavoring. If somebody said, pray God, that's when we need to make it back to the General Assembly. Somebody said, it all hard, but it can be did. Y'all ain't said nothing, pray God. Listen, throughout it all, amen, listen, Paul in his mind, he said, endeavoring. It, it may be hard for you, but it can be done. It may be tough, but you can do it. You take the challenge, if you will. <laughs> Be up for the challenge. What made him think like that? Pray God when he was uh, when he's there and as a young man, and uh, when they stoned Stephen over in Acts the seventh chapter, 
and laid his clothes at the feet of a young man by the name of Saul, standing there consenting to his death. Pray God, this man who's being stoned to death is saying, Lord, lay not this to their charge. What is it on the inside of this man being with his death, with his life on the line, but he's still crying out to God, saying, lay not this. It puts something indelibly on this young man Saul's mind. Put something in Delibit on his mind. It was a setup. Hallelujah. It was a setup. God put something on his mind. God ever put anything on your mind and then moved in with the way he wanted to move? He'll let you think one thing and God knows how to bring us right to where he wants us to be. He'll make you think you're climbing some career ladder. You think you're in control of it all. And next thing you know, you wound up right in the body of Christ, in the will of God, somewhere, pray God, that you never dreamed of in your wildest dream. <laughs> Put something in Dullaby on his mind. What's going on that he would call and not deny? I've, I, I brought in several and they wouldn't deny who Jesus was. I've had papers from the high priest and they wouldn't. What's going on on the inside? But a close up view of Stephen. Hallelujah. Set him up. He wasn't, he wasn't satisfied, amen, with running them out of Jerusalem. He, he, he ran them, pray God, went as far as, as Damascus, on his way to Damascus, pray God, simply want to destroy, simply want to annihilate anyone that called on that name. But Jesus met him out there. Y'all ain't said that. I hadn't read where he was knocked off a beast, but he did get knocked down. Y'all ain't said that. Laying flat down and hearing Jesus. Saul, Saul. Locked his eyes down so he could see. He's telling them, endeavoring, amen, endeavoring, amen, to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. It's hard work, but you can do it. He, it's hard work. He, he, he had to, even in his own life, get to the point. He said, pray God, I have learned. It wasn't always that way. But I've learned that whatever state I am, there will to be content. It doesn't mean I'm complacent, but wherever I am, I learn how to deal with it. I learn how to deal with it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever state I am, learn how to abound. Learn how to be a base. Learn how to be full. Learn how to be hungry. I found that I can do all things. Yes, through Christ which strengthened me. Hallelujah. Learn how to deal with it. How to be content. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ever seen a child that's content? Pray God. It don't mean you're complacent. Pray God. They just learn how to deal with it. Learn how to deal with it. Been standing in line a long time, but don't have any problem out of it. Pray God, regardless of what it was, he learned how to get there in Christ. He learned, pray God, that the weapons of his warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imagination, and every high thing that it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I've learned. I, I'm not saying I've arrived. I'm not saying I've always had been there, Paul, pray God. But I've learned over in Philippians, pray God. Over in Philippians again, I, I'm not saying I've arrived. I'm not saying I've apprehended, pray God. But I've got to go forward, pray God, forgetting, forgetting, forgetting those things that are behind. Reaching forward, pray God, to the mark of the prize of the high call. Tell somebody moving forward. Tell somebody moving forward. In order to move forward, pray God, we've got to find ourselves being long-suffering. We've got to find ourselves, pray God, amen, being long-suffering, forbearing one another, amen, in meekness, amen, forbearing one another in love. In love. I said in love. Not just talking it. He's talked to these Ephesians and in that circle, he talked to them, pray God, about being rooted and grounded in love. It's unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all. We can ask or think according to the power that's working on the inside. I said the power that's working on the inside that shows up on the outside. Endeavoring. Work at it. Somebody tell somebody to work at it. Work at it. You don't mind hitting the gym, but work at it. I know some of y'all checked out Bishop Wells the other night. He just stepped down there just like y'all ain't said nothing. And if that wasn't enough, he stepped right back where he, where he left from. And some of y'all still tired from the other night. Some of y'all pulled a muscle just looking at him. 
Glory! But you got to work at it. In order to build your faith, you got to work at it. God knows how to get us where we need to be. But we got to be willing to yield. We got to be willing to yield our members as, as instruments of righteousness. Pray God. And so he's telling them, endeavoring to keep the, 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 keep the, the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And I understand, pray God, sometimes, listen, there are three, uh, we mentioned it already, there are three key concepts that are shown here. First, unity is kept through love and long-suffering, not through force, pray God, and authority. Not through force and authority. Hallelujah. Secondly, unity is something which is, has to be worked on. And thirdly, the only unity worth working for, amen, is unity in the spirit. It's easy to confuse unity with uniformity. I mean, everyone looking alike and acting alike and being identical. Pray God. I'm not talking about, listen, unity works from the inside out. Come on, from a transformed life. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. We're learning how to live, but we not need to learn how to die. A living sacrifice. Somebody say holy. Somebody say holy. Somebody say consecrated. Somebody say set apart. Hallelujah, which our reasonable service, just our logical service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Hallelujah, by the renewing of our mind. We might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Give him praise and give him glory. Hallelujah. Sometimes we confuse unity with uniformity. Everyone looking and looking alike, being identical, dressing alike, and all this. Pray God, with lack, and we also confuse it with lack of conflict. Amen. Thus avoiding con the confrontation of sin. Pray God, just because there's conflict doesn't mean we've fallen out. Come on here, somebody. Pray God. Listen, God knows how to multiply. I said, God knows not only how to multiply, he knows how to add, knows how to subtract, he knows how to divide, he knows how to do it all. He got spiritual mathematics that'll blow your mind. He can take two and five, give me up, and feed 5,000, not counting women and children. Pray God, he take two and five, make seven. Pray God, two fish and five barley loaves, just seven pieces of something. Pray God, bless it, break it, and feed 5,000, not counting men and children. He's tough, on his, oh, he's tough on his mathematics. Am I here? He got a whole book called Numbers. <laughs> Math may have been tough for you, but it's not tough for God. He got a whole book called Numbers. <laughs> Wrote a whole book called Numbers. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Numbers in every part of our life. How tall are you? What's your weight? What's your waist size? What's your well, shoulder to shoulder? How many calories did you take in? How fast did you drive to get here? Numbers, 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 numbers. Give me your number. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. Numbers and everything. What's your shoe size? What's your head size? What's your hat size? Numbers. Numbers. What's your blood sugar rate? What's your heart rate? Numbers. Numbers. Somebody said numbers. How much fluid did you take in? How much fluid did you let off? Numbers. Numbers. He took numbers, pray God, to prove a point. He wrote a book called Number to Prove a Point. Out there in the wilderness, pray God, those that didn't want to do what he wanted to do, he just showed you a book of numbers. Those numbers declined. They started out the size of Chicago or uh, uh, Chicago or Los Angeles. Amen. Chicago, they say about 2.62 or whatever. And then uh, Los Angeles, 3.8. So he's bleeding two to three million people at first. But when you read the book of numbers, break out those numbers begin to decline over those 40 years till somebody died out out there. Then he took a Joshua and a Caleb and brought them in with those that they said would never make it. And just track the numbers and saw them decline. And then Joshua and Caleb brought these, those, those young ones, they say, would never make it. They'll never make it. Listen, it's a bad thing to go against God. It's a bad thing to say what God can't do. You setting yourself up for a real failure. If God be for you, who can be against you? Give him praise. You and God are the majority. Tell him, yes, Lord. Tell him, yes. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. 
He let Moses number them. When David got the number and stuff, he got in trouble. Huh? First Chronicles 21, when he numbered the folk, why? Because the enemy, when, when the enemy t t came against Israel, it tempted David to number the people. He tells his nephew, Zariah's son, his nephew he couldn't do anything with. He tells his nephew, and even his crazy nephew had enough sense, Joab had enough sense to know that something was wrong with that picture. You want me to number the people from Dan to Beersheba? He said, God is, even crazy Joab said, God has blessed Israel beyond. In other words, why, David, the devil was in it. First Chronicles 21 and 1. He, he, he withstood and he tempted that. And David said, no, I want it done. I want it done. And, and Joab went out there and half-heartedly numbered the folk, brought it back. And then Gad showed up. Pray God said, hey, David, hey, God, you, you in trouble. See, see, because you're about to misplace your faith. You're trying to put it in numbers. You need your faith in the Lord. You need to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct. But you subtly misplacing your faith and putting it in the arm of flesh. Cursed is the man that put his trust in the arm of flesh, but blessed is the man that put his trust in the Lord in Jeremiah 17. Gad said, you got three choices now. Y'all ain't said that. I don't want to hit these rabbit trails. I just want to hit this, and I, I, want, I want to digress. He said, you got three choices. You got three years of famine. You got three months, and I know you know what this feels like, David. Uh, you know what this feels like. You got three months with men on your trail, and you got three days at the hand of God, and you choose. David said, look here, I can trust God. Men been pretty hard on me. Pray God. I've been in caves. I've been on the run. I'm going to trust God. And in that three days, God sent an angel that's wiping out some of everything. But I want to let you know, at some point, David repented, and God told the angel, stay your hand, pray God. How many know he's a merciful God, but he's a God of judgment? He knows how to handle his business. He knows, listen, come in, listen, you can get more done with 20 minutes down on your knees than you can 30, 30 years of conniving and undershooting and doing all this kind of stuff. God knows how to handle his business. You never need to be shaken by it. You had to preach a good message last night. Pray God, the peace of God, powerful peace. Paul is telling them, listen, he has had stuff in double put on his mind. He's seen what God could do. He's had his eyes shut that he could see. He had scales put on him. That's as clear as he'd ever seen. With his eyes, with scales on him, he could see Ananias in the spirit now, in the spirit. See a man called Ananias coming to him. Brother Saul, God had to get him together. He had to get him together. Lord, I heard of this man. This is a, this a bad hombre right here. This a, he trying to argue with Jesus. This is a bad hombre right here. I don't think I need to go there and be praying for him. I don't think that's where the prayer meeting need to be. God said he's a praying man now. He prayed. Whatever it is, he's he praying, and he got his plate turned over. He's consecrating. He's fasting. Three days, and he'll see you coming, and you just go over and lay hands on him, so receive his sight, and be filled with the Holy Come on and give him praise right down through that. When God has done what he's done in this man's life, he's not intimidated by this tall order of bringing Jews and Gentiles together. Pray God. God has given him a word. How I many of the Holy Ghost is always ahead of the devil? Come on, somebody. I say the Holy Ghost. And God gave him a word endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. It's just good to God. It's just pleasant to God when brethren dwell together in unity. Unity. It's just like the oil that flows down Aaron's beard, even to his garments. Pray God. The anointing flows down. Pray God. When we come together in the way God would have us together. When we come together and do it God's way. Hallelujah. Lay my agendas aside. Lay all of my little stuff aside. Go to the Word of God that's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and it's a discerner of the thought. It, listen, the Word of God will separate us from ourselves. It'll separate us from our own ideas and our own ideology. The Word of God will sift through all this stuff. It is, I'm talking about in me. I'm talking about in me. I'm not talking. I'm talking about in me. The word. Somebody said the word. The word. Glory to God. 
with the Spirit working on the inside, with him working on the inside, and us yielding to his leading and renewing our mind through the word of God. Hallelujah. Listen, he knows how to bring us together. I said, he knows how to bring us together. I tell you, if I, Jesus had to say it. He said, listen, listen, it's expedient that I go away. I've got to go away. If I don't go away, uh, the comforter won't come to you. But if I go, uh, hallelujah, I pray to the Father that he send you back another comforter. He send back a paraclete. Amen. Of the same, pray God. The spirit of truth, pray God. He'll guide you uh, into all truth. Uh, he'll bring all things uh, to your remembrance. Whatsoever I've said unto you, he'll convict us of sin, of righteousness, and of somebody to thank God for the Holy Ghost. Somebody to thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Bishop Brian, I know you're general boy, but if you don't mind, sir, if you don't mind, just if you don't mind, just real briefly. Bishop Green had a Holy Ghost picked up a man from over in East Texas. God, I don't know if he explained it. I don't know if it's to him. But, you know, we do know in the word. He said, before I formed in the belly, I knew you. And before you entered your mother's womb, I sanctified you, ordained you. Even before the foundation of the world. You know how the Holy Ghost walks along beside us. He works on the inside. Somebody said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, that God would send us a general board member that walk along beside us, Bishop Green and myself. Pray God, regardless of what the path look like, pray God, and listen, he got Bishop, Bishop Brian operating just like the Holy Ghost on the inside. He knows how to bring us together, y'all ain't saying that. I said, he knows how to bring us together. It's God working on the inside. Hallelujah, to bring us together. The same spirit, hallelujah, the same spirit. Amen, of two, one. Hallelujah, God did it. Somebody, somebody say, God did it. Somebody say, God did it. He's bringing us together right now. Come on in, somebody. One faith. Look at the oneness in there. One faith. Come on in, somebody. Somebody say, one faith. One body. Seven times. One body. One spirit. Even as we're called in one hope of your calling. One Lord. One faith, one baptism, one God, seven times the oneness of God. Come on here, somebody. Pray God. Let us know he's in control of it all. He's in control of it all. Working on the inside. Working on the inside. Pray God, when we yield to him, he knows exactly how to get us where we need to be. I'm coming to a close here tonight. Pray God, just like Jesus said it. Amen. There in, in uh, John, the 17th chapter. Amen. John, the 17th chapter. Amen. We look at it and realize, as he said in John 17, 21 through 23, he said that they all may, be, this is his prayer for us, that they all may be one as thou art, Father, in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given to them that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thy in me, that we may be made perfect in one. Amen. That thou hast sent me, and hast loved me, even as thou hast loved them. The oneness that Jesus prayed, amen, for the body of Christ. Somebody said, Jesus prayed for me, pray God. And he's praying for me right now, making intercession, even now. I want to encourage us tonight, pray God, endeavoring to keep the, amen, the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. As Paul stood there and chained to those Roman soldiers and being bound in chain, he said, in the bond of peace, pray God, that will hold us. Amen. That will hold us regardless of what will, will, will garrison your mind and your heart, even through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Stand to your feet tonight. Stand to your feet. As Bishop Bryan has reminded us, you can say Texas Southwest first, Texas Southwest second. On both of them, it says Texas Southwest. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And regardless of that, pray God, if you're in the body of Christ, there's only one. There's only one. Somebody will give him praise right down through there. Right down through there. 
Father, we thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you for your word on tonight. Even now, Holly, you showed us in those first three chapters the wealth in Christ and those last three chapters, the walk in him, the walking it out in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, even to this point, how you yet order our steps and establishing our going. We thank you, God, even now that you're in absolute control of everything that we're doing. You had it already done before the foundation of the world ever was, and now you're manifesting it in this generation. And I thank you that we're part of it, even now. I pray, God, that you settle every heart, God. Settle every mind, every spirit of anxiety. We come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. In the midst of everything, change is inevitable. And God, we thank you that every change we have to allow, allow for transition throughout it all. We thank you for walking us through the change, and we thank you for walking us through the transition. At the end of the day, Hollywood, we want to see you in peace and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and pray. Say amen. What a powerful and pungent message. Let us not leave. Let's stay in place this night and tomorrow night. I wanted to preference the speaker's offering. I wanted to preference the speaker's offering and ask this jurisdiction to go the second round in your offering tonight for Bishop Rhodes and I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow night for Bishop Green and I do that with this understanding that these two men at the end of this meeting will transition into full time and full service jurisdictional bishops and Texas South West first and Texas South West second. And I want you to sow into them. Their burden will be heavy <laughs> economically and otherwise. So let's put a little something in their coffers to get them started. Would you do that? Would you do that? Thank you so much. Be be stand. We're going to pray. We're going to pray and I hope the finance, yes, they're coming, finance team. Father, we thank you for this word we heard on tonight. We're endeavoring to keep the unity of the body of Christ. We're showing that unity right now, even in our giving. What we do tonight, we're going to do it heartily as unto you. We're demonstrating our love and honor for you as we honor this man of God tonight. And we praise you and thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Powerful word from Bishop Shelton Rose talking about unity, that thing that's going to keep us all together. And of course, then tied it back into our current situation in terms of how Texas Southwest is going to multiply even into Texas Southwest 1 and Texas Southwest 2. But understanding, regardless of what our title may be in terms of our jurisdiction, we're still one body. We're still connected to the one Lord and we all have one faith. 
amen, in our one God. And we certainly thank God for just a power pack, amen, sermon and message on tonight that certainly electrified our souls on tonight. Listen again, those of you all that are in our virtual sanctuary, I don't want you to feel like just because you're not present that we cannot pray for you. I know many of you have already dropped your name in the chat uh, box uh, over the last couple of nights, and I promise you I've went through every one of them, and I've called your name out, and I've prayed and asked God to meet whatever need you might have had in your life, and I'm believing that God has done just that tonight. Listen, I don't want you to, to be exempt, but I want you to drop your name tonight in the chat box so that we might be able to call your name once again. We want to be able to lift your name before the Lord. Amen. Touch it in the green, believing that God's going to do what he said that he would do. Listen, we're not done this week. Amen is right at the peak and we're only going higher after this. Tomorrow night, amen, well, tomorrow is our Women's Day celebration beginning at 10 a.m. and then our women will be in charge of the service, amen, on tomorrow night. And then we're coming right back after that with our general service and we're inviting all of you all, amen, to come. I see you, Sister Mims, we're praying for you. Amen, uh, Eula Jones, we're praying for you. Amen. We're believing in touching and agreeing in what God will have, amen, to work throughout your life. And we're believing that it's already, amen, already done. Keep dropping your names that we might be able to pray for you. Amen. Tomorrow night, as we are, are celebrating, amen, our worship experience, Bishop Maurice Green, uh, Mexico prelate and incoming prelate for Texas Southwest number one will be our speaker. And I'm only believing that God is going to use him to bring even a mighty word on tomorrow. We thank God for uh, Missionary Barbara Queen Clark. Thank God for you. We're praying for you. Amen. Doris Patterson, we're praying for you. Paul Sterling and family, we're praying for you. We're believing God with you. Amen. Touching and agreeing. Amen. Linwood Jones, my brother, we're praying for you. Gladys Givings. Amen. Dorothy Wilson, we're praying for you. And I promise you again as you keep on dropping them even though amen we're getting ready to, to to end our service i want you to keep putting your name there so that we can touch and agree amen believing god is going to do what his word said that it would do amen and so tonight listen as we get ready to uh depart from this place but never from his presence tell somebody we're coming back here live tomorrow with the from the praise cathedral church of god in christ from our annual ministers and workers conference amen keep dropping your names amen marilyn williams sister pickett amen we're praying for you we're touching and agreeing elder michael hilliard amen we're praying for you sister tisdale and her family amen we're praying for you willie richard we're praying for you come on even though i may not call your name tonight keep dropping those names amen in the chat box on tonight let's look to the lord now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And every heart said, amen. We'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.